an international gathering. We have Stacy Lunsford from uh, Philadelphia, and uh, that's in, that's really exciting to have uh, uh, having Stacy here for the first time. So we're going to have an exciting time, and, and we're going to be brokenhearted. So here we are. God is in the house internationally and uh, around the uh, square table with the round pegs or the round table with the square pegs. Lord how, knows how to get us uh, fitted into his situation. So welcome, Stacy, uh, from uh, Philadelphia, USA. That's Pennsylvania, right? Yes, Philadelphia, hey. Pennsylvania, right, yeah. next to New, right next to New York in the first state, which is Delaware. Wow, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes our, our geography can be a little rusty, too. <laughs> yeah, and, and we have people from all over the world be hooking in here, and they'll be, and, and they'll be excited to hook up with you, uh, with all the different connections that you are on social media. And then we have, uh, you know, uh, David, our host, Iron Stan, uh, from uh, Gatineau, Quebec, and he works in Ottawa. So he's both Quebec and Ontario, and you guys are we're, we're weighted heavily from those from the east, so that means there's a lot of wisdom coming from an easterly wind uh, this day. What, what is it you have for us, David? Um, well, we, the Lord is, is bringing some good weather your way, and Yay! Uh, you know, yeah, our have, snow is gone. <laughs> yeah, we, we have some warm weather. I'm sure Stacy's got some warm weather as well down in the states there. So we we got some really good weather, and looking yeah. forward to uh, really hearing. What what Stacy has, you know, uh, Stacy, I went ahead and looked at, uh, you know, some of your. So I was I was sitting uh, today uh, at my computer and I, I went online. I went to the YouTube and mm -hmm. I said I'm just going to listen to uh, one of your uh, your kind of uh, support uh, messages that you have. So, um, mm -hmm. so, so here I was, uh, ten seconds in, and then I was kind of listening and I was doing other things, and and then eventually, you know, two minutes later, I was still listening. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's really good, you know. I was like, and then five minutes later, I was like, "Oh, I'm still listening here." And I was like, okay, okay. So "You get a chance, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and check out, you know, the YouTube." Praise God! Uh, I'm glad that yes, you was and, blessed. And, and, yeah, and, and and let them know, like uh, Stacy, feel free to have it. Uh, you know, the YouTube is called. I, I forget what Wait. it's called. Rise and shine, ministries. Yes. And then she has a radio program, you, program yeah. called Eloquently Speaking. Yes. 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 Yeah. And uh, she loves uh, working with the brokenhearted and, and loving with, with the unlovable and loving them and, and uh, helping those in the nations and missions. And, and uh, she has a real heart to help those that need lots of love. So uh, one of the yeah. things, David, uh, when you were doing, listening to all this, uh, was this at work or when you're just trying to get a nap? You don't ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was I was at the computer and uh, you know I was getting ready and I, I thought you know let, let's let's check it out for a few minutes, <laughs> you know. So yeah, that just was in case uh, you were at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know I, I I tried to post them there. I, I'll get I put the post on here as it. Oh, yeah. Ticker here, uh, and yep. then you can see at the bottom just yes. where you can find her. And, yeah, you know the radio Thank station. So wow, what yeah. a uh, what a connection you have there. I uh, looking at you know sort of that aspect of your radio station. Uh, you know, people can call in; uh, they can phone in and interact with her uh, on eloquently speaking. And uh, what an amazing idea! Um, you know, uh, the the Holy Spirit, I believe, really helps us and, and kind of pushes us, supports us, uh, you know, kind of when we're, you know, a little he hesitant, uh, uh, we, we need some boldness, you know, uh, we pray for that, uh, you know, at times. But, but they really help us, uh, the Holy Spirit helps us to, to, to get those ideas and, and to find other ways to, you know, uh, minister and, and to connect and, and reach out to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know, I love the uh, the picture that you have for today, the tsunami one. Uh, if you put that up, because it's going to be a tsunami of different things coming up. Um, you know, the God's glory, but also uh, I really believe what is, you know, the focus, you know, reaching out to, the, you know, broken families, uh, broken marriages, broke, those people who are just just having so much difficulty, you know, past this past two years, you know, uh, with the with the COVID issues and 
and uh, and around the world. There's there, there's so many people that have been isolated in different areas of persecution and to have this breakthrough of persecution. And I'm going to read Psalm 141 later because that was something that God gave me for this mm -hmm. prophetically, but I'll do that later. But um, if Stacy, you, if you could just uh, maybe we'll stop our we as Canadians will stop speaking a and we'll just allow the, our, our guests from the United States just to just speak your heart and just introduce yourself and and uh, and what excites you about Jesus okay well I want to say thank you thank you so much for having me today I'm very grateful and my name is Stacy Lunsford. I am from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we are known as the city of brotherly love. Yes, and that's great. We, we are. And, and I wanted to make sure I said that because our crime rate has increased tremendously and mm -hmm. they are saying a lot of negative things about my city, but I continue to stand on the word of God and God wants to do something great in this city. And so I'm his personal distributor of love. So, <laughs> oh, that's my, awesome. that is good. That is yeah, good. That is I mean, awesome. everything I do is is based on His love. In First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, I just try and you know sprinkle that love on those that I come in contact with. Um, God bless me, um, Dave. When you was talking about you visit the website, every picture, like the words, God had He guided me through the whole process. I didn't know how to do websites. So he, you know, just listening to him. But as my relationship with him grew, the ministry grew. And I didn't really know what he was doing. I was just being obedient to him. I love to write poetry. And I started out writing poetry, but then I was praying for people on my sick bed. So all of that was birthed out of my Valley experience. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I started, the name was just the Rise and Shine. But then it was a rise and shine for Jesus. And then it was a rise and shine for Jesus ministry. Mm -hmm. And out of that ministry, I have a Titus two hospice for women, which most people go to a hospice to prepare to go home. But yeah. the Titus two hospice for women yeah. is for those women that are dying spiritually, that they wow. could come and be restored. They can be healed. They can be delivered. And we want to provide that safe place for them where they can talk about the things that are troubling them, where they're not going to be ostracized or criticized. And that's, that's very important to me. And yeah. I have closing door ministries and that's for anything that anybody is coming out of and they need to close that door and okay. just wonderful testimonies there. You know, this tonight's topic is a great topic because so many people are hurting yeah. And um, the bulk of the ministry is the message, the overall message is to declare that hope is on the horizon. No matter what you are going through, hope yeah. is on the horizon. So we also have the Eloquently Speaking Radio Network, which we're in 37 countries right now. And God has really just opened up some doors for us. And I'm just so grateful and I love missions, as Apostle Ray said. See, I'm smiling now. Um, I help take care of the widows and the orphans and the less yeah. fortunate in uh, Kenya, in Nigeria, in Liberia, oh, wow. and in oh, Ghana. Wow. So in Liberia and, also, okay. Yeah, so in, in India, one of the pastors there, we uh, recently did the first well there, and we're in the process now of you know just getting everything ready because we want to start we need to do seven more wells right now mm. but um I, I love doing missions love you know making a difference um in the lives of those that love god like we do but simply yeah. don't have the resources right and you know with the little i have god just stretches it and i guess the only other thing to say is that i'm a teacher and i love teaching god's word and, you know, once I connected with your ministry, I was just like, I have to reach out because I love how you teach. Um, you have something inside of you that 
this world needs. And I believe that this is the season that God is going to continue to elevate both of you, your ministry, because you're reaching people, you're changing lives. And I was bragging about God today for the work that he's doing through you all, wow. because you're, you're going into the rural areas where most people don't want to go. And that is so amazing. And I had some time to spend on your website today too. And I, you know, I was just amazed. And Pastor Leslie, I saw your pictures with some of, you know, the people in the communities that you went to. Yeah. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful connection. And I'm happy to be a part of what God is doing. Oh, bless you. Bless you. We really appreciate that, Stacy. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use the, I, I got you two ladies up there because uh -oh. you, you guys are just shining like the glory. So uh, that tsunami glory there. And uh, I know uh, Ralph is going, he's watching different people coming on and I, I don't know what nations are hitting right now. Ralph, is it? Uh, I can't tell you just. No, no, no kid can't tell you just yet. <laughs> but I, I do know that uh, there will be some interaction from other nations um, while we go through this broadcast and, um, you know, Bilia and Jyoti, uh, you know, they're, they're from Bangladesh and they are doing like, he's, he's not like, he's like 27 and she's like 20, 21. They just got married. Oh, wow. and, I know yeah. they're young, right? And uh, mm -hmm. they just got, they just got married. I married them uh, <laughs> in the midst of the COVID sh shutdown and they had, and they had curfew. And we were going to do it on, uh, we were going to do it live online. And he had his dad's a pastor, so that you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, uh, the power goes down, the power goes off, and because there was a curfew, the, the bride hadn't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, he, he, he talk about everybody with long faces, uh, you know, you know, waiting for the wedding, but the bride isn't there, and then. And then the power goes off, the power comes on, and then the bride is there, and the bride is pretty distraught. Well, and it was it was pouring buckets of water. Like it yeah, it, it it was a it was a, a tsunami of water, and uh, yeah, they so, did a lot of rain. Yeah, yeah. the rain, and but I, I'm sure that it, the people saw her all dressed up in her wedding gown and and the different issues, and it was past curfew, but I'm sure they figured out. Yeah, we got to get her to the church on time. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, and then the power goes off, and and we're and Billy uh, and his dad. He said, "What are we going to do?" He says, "Well, uh, let's go to Messenger. I'll mess. I'll, I'll, I'll we'll do it through Messenger." <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so they, oh my goodness! So, so that, that, that's how you took them through all the all the vows, vows and everything and, was and, on Messenger. And, and of course, yeah. their dad was there, and they got married and everything else. So, so they, it's exciting. They, they weren't challenged by the difficulties. Yes. Or they, even, yeah, that didn't stop them. Even though you could see the tears in their eyes and they're, and they're trying to be happy at times, but the power going in and out. And they're wanting to make this, they wanted me to have, you know, pray the blessing. You know, they wanted all that and it just didn't work out that way, but God allowed it. And uh, so, so they started the ministry uh, in July and right now, they're somewhere around 10,000 souls saved. Amen. Yeah, like it's like wildfire. And they're saying, what do we do? Well, it's just, and, and it's basically a Muslim state. And, mm -hmm. and, and he says, Papa, we're, we're baptizing all kind, long beards like you, like Muslim guys <laughs> coming with beards like they're changing. <laughs> so, Hallelujah. And they're doing 300 more baptisms. Uh, on the twentieth next month, he says, "Okay, I'll, we'll try to send the funds and everything on the twentieth uh, to help them out because of May or June? No, of June, of June because okay. it gives us time. We need about five hundred dollars to feed everybody and do all the different things, and and they have to find a secluded secluded place. If, if you go on their website, right. Resurrection Life, uh, they generally find a, a rice paddy somewhere in the middle of nowhere <laughs> or some river where nobody's around, and the and, okay." And, 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 and the people bus in from all over place, and, and they're not only Muslim, but some Hindi and, and, and tribal, and, and it's amazing to, to watch it. But the most amazing thing is we can't send enough Bibles to them. You know, okay. he says, can we send you 200 Bibles, 50 Bibles? So 
our great our greatest thing is God is moving in a tsunami there, but you just got to get Bibles to them. So, and the Perfect. same thing is happening in India and and other places. So it's wonder wonderful to see what the Lord is doing in this tsunami, yeah. but. But at the same time, there's so many hurting people, not only in through India and Bangladesh and Nepal and, uh, you know, Myanmar and, and uh, all parts of Africa, but United States and Canada right now being yes. affected in, in so many different ways because of depression, of persecution, of separation, of family issues, of marriage issues. And so th this, what tonight is, is to encourage so many of the brokenhearted. And mm -hmm. uh, um, so Leslie, uh, Leslie has something that she's going to read, uh, okay. to kick it off. And then from there, uh, we'll springboard. Uh, you just take it from there uh, and we'll, we'll go into Isaiah 61, 1 and 2 uh, in regards to the brokenhearted and those who are spiritually blind and so on. Okay. <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll just let Leslie go with this one. And, mm -hmm. and, and that way, I'm going to put you and her together. On this, so okay. you guys are ministering together to uh, uh, probably uh, 200 million women right now wow, that really? around the world that will see this I'll and your it. beautiful faces. Anyway, somewhere between 200 and 200 million. Okay. So we'll pray. <laughs> no, you know, Ralph is laughing. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> He's laughing because the, the things are coming in now. Who's who's coming in? Uh, I, I've got an un, unusual display today. Oh. I'm not I'm not getting the usual oh, rundown. contacts okay. here. I something is on different Facebook? about uh, about Streamyard today. I'm not oh, sure. What okay, it is. are you on Facebook? Then, yeah, okay. I'm on Facebook. Okay, well, it'll show oh, up later. Oh yeah. Um, no worries. Because we've had people just start coming on that are loving our te teachings from Indonesia and Malaysia, Amen. and it's going into China because this is part of the thing is of taking what we've been doing from Africa to India and continue going east into China and those other nations. And there's different people uh, coming in and signing on. We just had uh, Tibet. We've had a bunch from Tibet come on uh, the last one. So uh, they're signing up. So praise the Lord. Uh, where you go, Leslie, where you go, ladies, women of God. We call our, our women's ministry. Wow. You gals are wow. <laughs> you know, and uh, one day I hope you. Oh, there's there's George from Fiji. We got to get you. They'll, yeah. they'll love you in Fiji, Stacy. They'll love you. There's George. I can't <laughs> wait to go. <laughs> uh, he's, he's our leader there, and uh, his wife is uh, Khaleesi, and uh, oh, she gives the best massages. I tell you. Anyway, so okay, here's here's take it off, Liz. Yeah. So you know, again, we're just we just want to welcome everybody that's able to join in now live and also those that will tune in a bit later. And, you know, as was mentioned before, if you're, if you're just coming on, it's like there are so many broken and wounded and persecuted and sick and all kinds of people hurting all over all over this globe. Mm -hmm. um, yes, in each one of our countries, in the United States and Canada, but globally, there's so much right now. And we think of our we think of the the folks in in the Ukraine and and in Russia too. There's there's just so much hurt and pain. But this is a it's kind of a it's a prayer taken well it's a prayer that touches the heart of God type, taken out of that book by that name for thirty one prayers that touch the heart of God. So I'm just going to, and this one is titled, Help Me to Persevere. And so we, you know, as we come together and we can quiet our heart before the Lord and we commit to him all these situations in each one of our lives, it's difficult. And we can say, Lord Jesus, you have said that in this world, I will have trouble, but that I should take heart for you mm -hmm. have overcome the world. We say, hallelujah, Lord God, for you are greater than all of our fears. You are more powerful than all the powers of darkness that wage war against our soul. Almighty God, you alone are God. And may your name be great and proclaimed loudly in and through each one of our lives. Forgive each one of us, Lord, for the times that we do lose heart. And we, we all have those times. Yes. And, and we can say that, Lord, sometimes there are all those times, and forgive me for when I get overcome by the world and all those issues. Father, would you give me and each one of us eyes to see that our momentary troubles 
are achieving for each one of us an eternal glory that will far outweigh all of these troubles. This eternal glory will outweigh all the stuff that we all walk through every day. Mm -hmm. And may each one of us be found worshiping you in the midst of the obstacles, the challenges, and the trials of this life. Father, remind us constantly by your Holy Spirit that we're not home yet. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Empower each of us to persevere and endure hardships in our lives for the sake of your name and the formation of your character in each of us. Lord, we acknowledge that you know all of our ways. You know what's particular to yeah. each one of us. And that you will bring each of us through all these storms in our lives. You refine us as gold and may these trials that we face teach us to obey your word. And may our faith be proved genuine and result in praise and glory and honor to you, Jesus. Lord, we each of us confess that you alone are God. There is yeah. no other. There is no other, and we take, we take and we trust in your name alone to save each of us, sometimes to save us from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Lord, I rest and we rest in your sovereignty, and we hope in your name as we wait for you. Lord, our hope is in you. That's where our hope lies. For you have searched each one of us, and you know us, Lord. You know each of us and everything about us. And when I am still, or when I am busy, where I go and what I do, you know it all. You know our ways and you know every thought that each of us has. And even before I speak a single word, you know it. Yeah. So the stuff that goes on in between these ears, he knows what we're going to be spitting out these mouths. Yes. <clears throat> and that's something else to be for us to be conscious of, right? Mm -hmm. But at any rate, I'm taking myself, oops. All right. Okay. A little adjustments in my... It moves easier. Yeah. So um, so we know, God, that through every, every thought that we have, that you know each one of them before we ever speak them. There is not any place that we can go where you're not there. Not any place at all. Hey, not even the bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if we're practical. Um, so there's every place that we go, our God is with us. We thank you, Father God, that even in the darkness that seems to engulf us at times is as light to you. Yes, yes. And I praise you, Father. We praise you and we acknowledge that every day of our lives was ordained for us by you. Therefore, I and we now submit ourselves to you and to you alone and stand against all the schemes of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And so there are scriptures, references through all of that. And that's, you know, as, as I've gone through, there's from John 16, 33, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, Revelation 2, verse 3, 1 Peter 1, 7. Isaiah 44, 6. Psalm 20, verse 7. Psalm 139, verses 1 to 16. And James 4, 7. So anytime that anyone needs to look and find that and just, just speak what the scripture speaks about you and over your life and how that impacts. And then as we, as we speak those words out, our mm -hmm. ears hear it. And that brings about change and changes our thinking and changes our thinking patterns. And we all need that more than we even realize, I think, sometimes. So yeah. I just say, Father God, we just thank you for this thank time that Jesus. we can have together, Lord. I thank you, God, that um, because of, you know, sometimes technology can be something of a pain. But, Lord, it also has been very helpful to connect us one with another that we yeah. otherwise would not have been able to connect. So, Lord, we just say we want to bless this time that we hang out together, Lord, with Stacy and with David and with Ralph and Earl and Ray and I here, but, Lord, for everyone who is connecting. We just are grateful, Lord, that we can do this and we can spend time with you and Holy Spirit, that you would cause us to hear what the Spirit is saying. 
and that yes. we would be in the midst of what's going on here in the here and now, that Lord, we would pay attention, that if you want to drop something into our ears and our spirit, God, that we will hear, and we will be obedient to what you tell us to do. In Jesus. Yeah. Amen. In Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, All the Holy, right. Holy so, Spirit's movement, so we'll just move it back east to you. And I and it, it's so ex wonderful to hear more of that background of your of your situation, um, you know, of how you're ministering to so many. And and I really believe there's going to be a lot of reconciliation of families through this particular uh, broadcast. That's what I've been praying for: is the reconciliation of, of families or issues or whatever it may be. And I don't know if you have had an opportunity to talk to David, but he, he works in that area as well in regards to uh, battered individuals or women or so on. So there, there's so much out there where um, we need to bring and lift up yes. the hands of those who are going through such a battle of persecution or uh, I love Romans 5.5. 5. It says, uh, of all, you know, uh, it, it says hope cannot be disappointed because it is a gift from the Father <laughs> delivered by the Holy Spirit in love and power. So take it away from that one, Lee, uh, Stacy. Oh, that is powerful. Um, one of the other ministries is eloquently speaking about restoring the family. So yeah. I've been praying for families for a very, very long time. And I've watched families come together and be restored and marriages. And then my family fell apart. Yeah. So how do you continue to stay focused and stay on your journey? When yeah. Leslie, you was reading the, the prayer, yeah. the word darkness was standing out to me. Okay. So a lot of times, once we enter into that darkness, that's where we tend to lose hope and we have yeah. faith disengagement sometimes, but it yeah. doesn't matter. You know, God is still with us. Like you said, he'll go to the bathroom with you a right. anywhere we go. He is with yeah. us. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us, right. but it's all about understanding the process. Right. And learning the things that we need to learn while we're going through those dark places. Yeah. And um, many families are grieving and it's not because the loss of a loved one. It's because it's just so much brokenness. It's in, I just had a radio show that was entitled, Shh, Don't Tell Anybody. You know, uh -huh. and it's, it's so many secrets right. and those secrets have band-aids and this pus and this blood and it's coming out of these band-aids. And yeah. it's like, no, stop bleeding and get healed. We need to break the silence about yeah. what happened to us. Right. And this is where your ministry, my ministry and those like us are yeah. very, very important because yeah. God has allowed us to be that safe place. But until you go through the hurt and the disappointment and the darkness, you really don't know that is, you know, what God is doing. At least I didn't know, but no. now I know. And I'm so grateful. It's like, okay, God, what do you have for me now? Because Isaiah 61 and two mm. is a part of everything we're talking about right now. Right. So right. It, is, it is in that darkness. If somebody, you know, of course people are listening, but it is in your dark place that you really mature and become the man or woman that God has created you to be. Yeah. And sometimes we, we suffer loss and yeah. connecting that with the, the grievance right now throughout the pandemic, many people lost their jobs. Yeah. Many people lost their homes. They yeah. lost their cars. You know, marriages broke up. Right. For the first time in years, the family is forced to come together. But you know what? They didn't know how to get along. They didn't know how to talk to each other because right. everybody's always going somewhere. So one of the questions I wanted to present, how do we bring everybody back to the table? So that we can have good dialogue without the phones, without the electronics, and right. just talk about what's going on inside of your heart. No. Because all of our, you know, all of those issues, yeah. do you have a hole in your heart? 
How is that hole affecting you? Do you have right. a black heart? Do you have a bruised heart? Do you have a stitched up heart? And mm -hmm. whatever the condition of your heart is, yeah. go to God in prayer and cast your cares upon him. And many people don't know how to do that. Because right. they go, they go to the church, and this is not bashing the church, but sometimes the church hurt them, yeah. and so they yeah. turn their back on God because how yeah. others in the church misrepresented them. So you okay. connect that with the church hurt, and you yes. just have, you know, a whole lot of hurt people that yeah. want to trust but don't know how. But then they hear the word of God and it's it's like the anointing on the word. It says, you know what? I'm going to reach out to that ministry. I'm going to listen to that ministry a little more. And so that's why it's port important to have, you know, these kind of platforms in, in the teaching. Because that's how, you know, the people need to hear the truth. Yes. Yeah. And hurt people hurt people. Yes. Heal people. Heal. Help hurt people. <laughs> yeah, and um, and I like I like what you talked about that backdoor ministry, and I, I just got a kind of epiphany when you were talking about that. And so a lot of people will uh, I'm just going to call it a black box, and mm -hmm. whatever those difficulties are in the black box, sometimes sometimes people just put the Holy Spirit in a black box and don't want to bring them out. But sometimes that black box uh, represents a lot of the different. Uh, well, whether it's fears or shame or guilt or whatever it may be, and um, and and forget the scripture that you know that talks about how all those things were nailed to the cross and and leave them there and don't take them back. So what I was right. getting, uh, close the door to the black box and leave it alone in there because God's got it under control. Don't yes. take it back. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, you know sometimes we we make those mistakes and we take things back that we shouldn't be taking back because. Everything about the blood of Jesus, you know, the, the, the devil always, always would like to bring condemnation towards us. And in the courts of heaven, when the father is sitting on his throne and uh, Jesus is sitting on his throne on the right hand of God, the father, and the enemy is coming in, the devil's coming in to build his case on how much Ray Johnson is a weenie and uh, or whatever he may be in the past. And the father says, well, wait a minute, let's let me check my records. Oh. All my records are blank. They're, 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 it's, there's nothing there. And, and nothing they're in, there. in that place of forgetfulness. And the only individual that's going to remember it is yourself and the devil. Because you're covered in the blood. Because you're co-seated with Christ in heavenly places. And you can't be there if there's sin. You're 100% healed, beautiful, and everything else. Just remember that. Because you're also mm -hmm. sharing the inheritance. Uh, I love that in Ephesians 2.6. So if we just keep our ideas that we're seated in heavenly places and we're already co-sharing co in the inheritance. That's everything that Jesus has, will have, and ever will for everlasting. And we're part of that. So we just got to, we just got to make that shift in, in, in thinking and understanding both physically, naturally, and spiritually. So yes. I know you're, we're going to read Isaiah 61, one to two, mm -hmm. but because of what you said there in darkness, there's a scripture that I've used for 20 years in this particular ministry, and I, and I want to bring it out here because of the darkness, because there are individuals sitting out there in darkness. And yeah. in Isaiah 50, Isaiah 42, uh, when we would ministering in prisons or uh, addiction centers or or just in ch or just in church, where people are coming in with with pain and difficulty, uh, starting in verse seven, it says to open blind eyes. Well, that, those are the same eyes that we're talking about in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 2, because those who are captive are those individuals whose eyes are blind. No different yeah. than Saul uh, when he was blinded, blinded on the Damascus road. You know, mm -hmm. he had to be blinded naturally to see spiritually. So in this situation here, it says to open blind eyes to bring the prisoners out of prison. Okay, so mm -hmm. Isaiah is, is, is to bring the prisoners out of prison. All those yeah. in captivity. Now, and it says those who sit in darkness. Now in the Hebrew, that word sit in darkness, those who are in the fetal position, who have My given Lord. all hope and are contemplating suicide and they can't take it anymore. Those who are sitting in darkness. Mm. I am the Lord and this is my name. I am going to bring you out of there. 
I am going to yeah. bring you into the light. No longer sit in the fetal position to accept death. Come and sit in the throne of righteousness along with my son. Totally healed, freed, uh, in everything that you are as my beloved son and daughter. And my yeah. glory I will not give to another, nor my that praise means. to carbon images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, pass and these new things of freedom and mm -hmm. understanding and blessings and everything that I declare before they spring into being in your life. Please accept them, grasp and believe in them, not in the things that bring destruction. Yes. Amen. So that that scripture, I have another one, but I'm, you go back to Isaiah, you yes, take yes. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. But I, when you said darkness, that scripture just bounced out to me. So I, I know that's going to be a, an encouraging scripture for you down the road, too, for others. So bless you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's take it away, Stacey. Oh, you, okay. Isaiah 61, beginning at verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. In verse two, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And I want to pause there because later in um, the New Testament, when Jesus read that scripture himself, he closed the book. Right, <laughs> man. <Because laughs> that that prophecy, <laughs> that prophecy was fulfilled. And in the day of vengeance of our God, which is yet to come, yes. to comfort all that mourn. And that well. is Isaiah, the 61st chapter, verse 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Yeah. There is nothing we can do without him. Mm. Right. And he gives us the ability to minister to people, to talk to people, to smile at people. Yeah. and. I want to say that a, there's so much healing in a smile, but so many people are angry and they're upset today and you don't yeah. really see smiles. Like, like remember in the old days, you, you would hear people singing, you know, on the subway, yeah. on the street, going to work. And I sing everywhere I go and people look at me like I'm crazy, but I like, I have a song in my heart because I yeah. overcame so much, but really? there's so much healing in the smile. And it's like God has anointed our smile and it may, you know, save somebody from doing something drastic because they may get love. You never know what your smile is going to say to somebody else. But the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. And when you think about the brokenhearted, it's a wide variety of people. And, and oftentimes I like to go back to Matthew's when Jesus was teaching in the multitude mm -hmm. because it was a whole bunch of people, but it doesn't say the condition of the people. That's and, true. And I believe that we are, are going to experience the multitude, just like you were saying in Bang Bangladesh, you know, all of the people that's coming in the baptisms, the multitudes are coming, but guess mm. what? They're hurting, they're broken, and they're looking for love. They're looking for a relationship. They're looking for answers. And so mm. that's our opportunity to teach yeah. and to bind up the brokenhearted. And a lot of times, we don't take advantage of that. We don't even teach on that that much anymore. And that's mm -hmm. an area that we really need to zero in on because too many people are walking around wounded and the darkness would love to swallow yeah. them up. Yeah. Now, one thing that I want to connect with the darkness in Luke, the second chapter, <clears throat> when Jesus 
um, Mary had um, Jesus in the manger and all of the pretty pictures that we see, it's like bright and it's, it's like the hay, everything is beautiful. But the mangers back then, it was dark. It was like a cave. And they had like um, the, the feeding troughs for the animals that was carved out of the rocks in the cave. So right. our Jesus was born in this dark place. But out of, the, out of that manger, you know, even when he was born in the light and everything, but out of the darkness comes light. So mm -hmm. that just did something to me when I learned about the condition of the manger. But before Jesus was born, let's look at what happened to Mary and Joseph, because everywhere they went, they were rejected. They was turned away. There was no room. But the, the innkeeper said, I have room in the manger. The number one reason people are suffering today and are brokenhearted is because of rejection. Yes. Jesus was rejected. Jesus was despised. <laughs> Jesus was a man that was acquainted with sorrow. Yeah. And as new believers, we don't always understand that even though it's the best decision we ever made, we're going to experience some difficulties. We're going to have some tests and some trials and tribulations. But ultimately, if we just stay faithful and stay connected, we're going to get through all of those tests. We're going to get through all of those trials, but we are going to be rejected. And Pastor Leslie, I think a lot of, of women have been so rejected. Yes. And, you know, they turn inward and they internalize yes. so much. And yes. men handle the rejection different than the women. But I want to turn it over to you to just pick up from there. Okay. Yeah, it, you know, it's true. Like, as women, we're, you know, we're wired so differently than men. And oftentimes, especially, you know, what, even once before the Lord, but even once you know the Lord, there's, it's like all this networking that goes on, you know, that we're picking up stuff, like all the wires that, that everywhere, all that information mm -hmm. is sometimes like an overload in our senses and what we're, sensing the environment around us and then the rejection that that can come because because even just sometimes the way someone uh you go to speak and try to speak you know what's what you want to say or what's in your heart to say but that doesn't mean that it's going to be received depending on who the crowd is around you or even within your own home and you just get shut down so you're right you just internalize yeah. And then you find that, okay, it's not safe to say anything. Therefore, I'll just shut up. And that's the safer place to be. And then it, that yeah. gets internalized. So that rejection then starts to work at even um, more self destructive thinking. And, oh, wow. right? The, you know, we become more self destructive without even knowing it sometimes. Yes. Where, you know, you just, and how, how many people, you know, how many women do you see like biting the heck out of their nails and doing all this stuff? Mm -hmm. Cause they don't know where to take the pain and the, you know, just some, some of all that hurt that's in there and, and being shut down, shut down. But that's an outward, you know, the outward appearance then is speaking of so much more that's going on within the rejection of, you know, if someone is in a position where, <laughs> Okay, so it could be family members that even make comments, uh, you know, and it's been such a battle through the years and ages for women's shape, you know, the shape. And if you're not skinny mini, if you're not like this, if you're not like that, if you don't fit the mold, or sometimes it's for, you know, um, and, and I'll, I'll just go with a, a personal example <clears throat> from years and years ago. You know, from the time I've been very young, um, weight and extra weight has always been, you know, something that I've battled with. Um, so, and, and in my growing up years, my, my father and his side of the family, you know, his, his um, siblings, so much emphasis was put on being with your overweight or, so I had one time we, you know, we had moved away from the province of Manitoba. We were in uh, Saskatchewan briefly in the next province. 
um, came back to the hometown here to visit and, and went to a, in, in this rural community in the prairies, they have what they call fall suppers, which means it's so fall, a, fall, fall, not uh, fall, but fall. fall. Or fall. Or fall, yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. Because they're birds. That's right. And you're going for turkey. Fall. Oh, I never went to one of those. <laughs> so, so at any rate, so I was, we, we went to one of these suppers in the local community, uh, these meals and the whole community gathers and every, you know, all that. So while I had been away, you know, in, you know, away from the area and uncle, my, you know, my dad's brother had like made no bones about saying, well, haven't you just piled on the beef? And that, you know, because of the sensitivity, you know, you're already sensitive about your appearance, you know, most right. Of them, right? Um, and you don't fit the, you know, you don't fit the image that, you know, that other people would have for you to fit. Um, and then we don't like our own image. So there's that whole mm -hmm. business there. It's replacing the images in our head. But at any rate, after he mm -hmm. said like that, it took me a very long time because that was a, like a rejection of who I was as a person. Not, I didn't take it as the, you know, just the visual effect or just the appearance. For me, it was the rejection, you know, as, as a person and, uh, you know, as a woman. So that kind of rejection. And so it does cause you to, to you know, to pull more back. It does cause you to become more internal and then more, you know, just more aware that you don't quite meet the standards of other people. Well, after this long, like, praise God, because I don't have to, but, but it takes us a lot of years to get yeah. to that place. If mm -hmm. we go through the healing processes that the Lord will take us through. So rejection is huge. And, and for women, it is huge. And that's only minor compared to, as you would have known from, you know, either people you've ministered to or even in, you know, whatever some of your own family situations, but the, just the rejection, you know, total rejection, like, I, you know, you're not good enough for me. I don't want you. I don't want to be near you. Um, you know, all, all of those things. And it, it does, it causes great pain and suffering. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. And so, yeah. So, yeah. You'll you'll have much more to add to this, Stacey, I'm sure, but that's just sort of my, the quick thinking that came to mind here. Now, that was well, a wonderful example that you shared, and I'm glad that you shared that because it's real. And a lot of people, that yeah. weight thing, that's that's really, you know, it's personal and it's, it's very hurtful. But what yeah. stood out to me is when you said replacing the images in our head yeah. and, and, the you know, when we receive the lies that the enemy whisper, or even what yep. your brother said to you, it changes yep. your whole image of you. And it that's does. the goal of the enemy. Um, yep. The one thing I wanted to really express today was exposing how he works. Because uh -huh. when we receive the lies, yes, when we embrace the lie, we become that lie, we yep. lose our identity. It's You're like right. we're no longer who God said we are, but we're submitting to what this lying devil said. Yes. So once we come out of agreement with yep. the lies, yep. then yep. we come into agreement with the truth, then we can start working on our image again because we see yep. ourselves through God's eyes. Yes. That's right. You're right. No, carry on because that's that's yeah. exactly it. The the image and and the emotional state that we're in at the time and what oh. that whole thing. Yeah. So we yeah replacing the image that was implanted by that lie of the enemy that we bought into some you know bring the bring the emotion and the memory and the picture that's attached to the you know you think the thought there's automatically that picture that comes that image of mm -hmm. you know, where you were exactly when and so on and so forth yeah. and then how you see yourself so replace that now by being healed in the emotional yeah. realm and the image, then that image, just like what you were saying, as the way the Lord sees us, that's the image we need to be have implanted. So we, we are embracing mm -hmm. truth. And the truth is that our God 
sees us as these beautiful created beings that he yeah. that he originated before we ever arrived in planet earth that the yeah, beauty nice. that he yeah. and his glory being brought through us and changed that image that we see of ourselves there's far too much scar tissue on oh people yeah today. yes there's so mm -hmm. many wounds that have been superficially healed by whatever method you want to call it but it still leaves a scar there is no scar when when uh jesus heals it it's it's back yeah. to a you know a beautiful heart but there are different things that we'll try to do to heal the heart by whatever the maybe the program is or perfection is or whatever it may be like uh like a lot of uh, people or different i'm, I'm just going to go through a family like family situations where mm -hmm. maybe parents are are more are are very strict on their on their kids or grandkids yes. and mm -hmm. don't have the patients and they and the kids are just not measuring up and they and they put this performance like you know like they put this uh over exaggerated performance upon them uh based on the expectations of man and the father in heaven doesn't have those so then you have this wrong image of what a father's like or a mother or a grandfather and and you, of the wrong perspective because all you've had is this rejection or you've had this multitude of anger coming back at you at so many different ways and saying that uh i'll never be worthy i'll never measure up and i and you're in this fear situation and uh, that's where that scripture uh, perfect uh, love casts out fear uh, yeah. Because you're, you've been living in a, uh, an environment that's only conditional love. You do this, you get that. And our Father in Heaven, it's all about unconditional love. And it's hard for people to make the switch from the unconditional love, especially if they've been conditioned in a measure up to this kind of love, or you don't get my love, or you get a spanking, or you get this, or you lose privileges, or whatever it may be. I have to do this. And, and, and then you turn that on yourself. And you and yeah. you, you become performance driven on yourself with the wrong priorities that are kingdom principles of this world and not the kingdom of heaven. So, in that there has to be the, the in Second Corinthians ten three to five. You know it talks about keeping every thought captive to the knowledge yeah. of Christ. So our our database needs to be to the knowledge and to the blessings and the love of Jesus Christ and the Father Adonai Elohim through the Holy Spirit not maybe on a on a fractured or broken type of system that we've come out of and uh i know like i'm gonna i'm gonna speak about um my son-in-law and our daughter like my, our daughter is is as beautiful and is what leslie is and our son is as beautiful uh, as leslie is my, the son-in-law is as beautiful as you are when i say that like he, he his parents are haitian but he was born in montreal and he is he is m one of my most beautiful and i can't i love hugging that guy you know and he mm -hmm. loves hu hugging me he says my dad never used, he never hugged me that's right my dad never hugged me he never showed me this love you showed me this love right from the beginning you mm. never put any conditions on i know i've loved you unconditionally well i said well you look after my daughter right here yeah, yeah. <laughs> one condition <laughs> <laughs> or else uh, the bullet comes out. Yeah. I mean, that's my nickname. But I'm sorry, don't hit me, honey. Yeah. But uh, but the unconditional love of whatever it is, and now they have. I, I just can't wait to get hugs from Rob, mm -hmm. and Rob can't get wait for hugs for you or myself in a family situation that he's mm -hmm. never had. Right. And people need to have that family situation if they've never had it. And it's yeah. and, and to have that healing process. Well, and, and that's part of the the demonstration that helps people come to that place of right. you know of of not being being feeling rejected. Yeah. Because you know when you know like by the grace of God you know this was the family that you know Rob got to look into. But that's not always so for people, and and but it does help when there's um, you can change the examples and the the image of what family really is and looks like. And that happens in Isaiah sixty one verses three and four, 
when we get, you know, th th that's, yeah. that's kind of the crossover, the tipping point. But I, I have another mm -hmm. scripture that I want to read on and, and put it back to you. Um, okay. And, that, and that's, yes, uh, I, I know, Isaiah 40. Um, pardon me, Isaiah 42. Pardon me, Psalm 142. Yes. Because I, I have been in this exact place where this cave is in Engedi when I went to Israel. And uh, when, and this is where the cave where he wrote a lot of these Psalms when he was running from King Saul. And in front of this cave, there's a beautiful pool of water that the most freshest water that you can go uh, drink out of, uh, swim. And around it are these beautiful trees, cassia, cassia trees that are like mm -hmm. weeping willows that bow down before. And, and that's part of the fourth ingredient of the anointing oil is cassia, which is which is which brings uh, how could I say healing to those situations that are so hurtful inside you. It's, wow. it's a natural, you know, uh, back then they didn't have laughing gas with the or those things that you put in to freeze your tooth or whatever to pull it out. They would take these leaves and drink the tea, or they'd put it on wounds, and and and, and it would bring a calmness, but it would bring a healing, and they wouldn't feel the pain. So where David was in this in this cave. Re and writing this particular, reading this psalm, have you got it? Psalm 142, wow. verses mm -hmm. 1 to 7. Verse 7, he says, I am crying out from the deepest part of my soul. I am crying out. And it says, uh, for, they, for, for they are stronger than I. And, and I'll, I'll get Leslie to read the whole thing. But seven says, for they are stronger than I, bringing my soul out of prison. In other words, my soul is in prison. The king is trying to kill me. I am in this place in Yeti, And I, I'm in this safe place where God's got me. He's providing everything. But my soul is crying out. I'm in prison. Bring my right. soul out of prison. This is David saying that I may praise your name that the righteousness shall surround me for you shall deal bountifully with me. He is crying out Listen. from the prison of his soul. Many of the people out there right now are crying yes. out yes. from the prison yes. of yes. the depth of their darkness, of their soul. Mm -hmm. And God, and he says that I may praise and, you know, praise will break through that darkness into worship. And that's probably one of the greatest weapons we can to break through the darkness into the light. So, Leslie, can you read it? It's a short psalm. Yeah. So, yeah, Psalm this is the Amplified Version, Psalm 142, starting with verse 1. I cry to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord do I make my supplication. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed <laughs> and fainted, throwing all of its weight upon me, then you knew my path. In the way where I walk, they have hidden a snare for me. Look on the right hand, that point of attack, and see, for there is no man who knows me to appear before me. Refuge has failed me, and I have no way to flee. No man cares for my life or my welfare. In verse 5, I cried to you, O Lord, and I said, You are my refuge my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my loud cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring, me, bring my life out of prison, that I may confess, praise, and give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me and crown themselves because of me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Amen. I, you know, I, I, I know we can go into more teaching, but I think this is just the time just to pray for people who are in this situation. And like in verse three, mm -hmm. where it says, where my spirit was overwhelmed within me. There's so many out, out there where their spirit is overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Stacey will have more to say. Yeah, yeah. I know she does, but I, whatever way she wants to go, she could pray. You, you take or, it however you know, but I'm just saying Stacey's. the Holy Spirit's moving what? here beautifully. It's, it's two things I want to say, because in first Samuel, I'm not going to go there, but in first Samuel, the first chapter, Hannah prayed from the bitterest part of her soul. Yes. And she, she, she presented her petition to God and God heard her and God answered her. Mm -hmm. So tears capture God captures God's attention. Yes. yes. So don't be afraid to cry out to God. And um, Apostle Ray. 
when you mentioned David in that cave, God highlighted a whole nother level of brokenness and hurt and pain because the spirit of Saul has chased so many Davids away mm -hmm. and they are hiding in that cave. So yeah. that's one of, if we could shoot some arrows in that direction, because we have a whole lot of anointed men and women that are looking for that safe place. Yes. To yes. come out of that cave. Mm -hmm. Good work. Good work. Mm -hmm. You know, good work. So many people need to be in that place of having a covering. Yes. Having a place that they think a mentor, uh, having a, a father, uh, having a, a spiritual mom and dad, uh, you know, uh, uh, just to be covered and loved so they can get through uh, some situations, but also to be prayed with, but also give uh, wisdom and spiritual direction during difficult times. Mm -hmm. And that's and, so and, good about Hannah there. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. And to, and to grow in their spiritual gifts. You know, if we're yeah. really going to be about God's business, we have to act, activate Ephesians, the fourth chapter, you know, the edification of the saints. And that yeah. comes with teaching. But if, if, you know, the David, they're gifted, they're warriors, they're intercessors, praise and worship. God yeah. has given so many gifts. But if I can't use my gifts, if I'm not being trained in those gifts, what good is yeah. the gift? They're going to lie dormant. So. The spirit of Saul has to bow down. You know, yeah. Saul, right. King Saul was jealous. The spirit of mm -hmm. jealousy is connected with the spirit of envy. Yeah. And then once that mm -hmm. whole battle takes over, here comes the spirit of heaviness, which is down in Isaiah verse three. And that heaviness is depression, it's despair, it's discouragement. And those are all of the arrows, more arrows, you know, like boom, boom. We need to just, you know, break up the atmosphere and set some people free tonight. Yes. Oh, that. Yeah. Wow. You, you just go for as the Lord leads you, Stacy. You just have at her. Okay. Yeah. You the, just... You've got the wow factor right now. Uh, and the <laughs> women of wow for resurrection life are uh, uh, warriors. Warriors of worship, and uh, that really—that's our wow gals and uh, our intercessors. <laughs> you're 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 bringing the fiery darts right right into the cave. So, hallelujah! <laughs> just, just, hallelujah! Just, yeah, listen, just, and I, let have, I have to I have to come and make it to one of the meetings in person. That'd be very <laughs> cool. Uh, well, yeah. one of the exciting things today is that uh, one the next one of the next steps for getting the apostolic resurrection life gathering center here in Carberry training, yeah. uh, and training center is that uh, we had one of the financial institutions come to our place today and uh, mm -hmm. they have reduced a representative, yeah. a representative and said that they would reduce uh, our down payment by uh, fifty percent or less. <laughs> And uh, they are in the process of doing the underwriting right now to, to put that together. And they are saying they want to have this all done within the next two weeks. So talk about uh, arrows going into the cave like, and things ch uh, changing in the right way. Uh, because we were at the one place there and we didn't think uh, that whatever the religious spirit was, whatever the soul spirit was, whatever it was that was preventing us to make that next step. Uh, actually, the help came here to our home uh, today, and, and and the paperwork's done. So now the now the the, the rest just have to be has to be delivered. So uh, there's no more questions other than that. So I think all of that to say that once we have the the this training center established, it'd be awesome to have, have you come and, and teach. You could do some great teaching, and yes. a whole lot of people can be set free. And there's yeah. and and encouraged. Just encouraged that there is hope, that there is help during yeah. these dark, dark times. Mm -hmm. There is there's hope and there is help. And and so yeah, to have you um, once we get everything you know established as God would have it, then. Um, to have you come would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay. I will be there. And I'll get yeah. that in prayer, too. But I just <laughs> want to thank God for, you know, the miracles. Dave opened up with his miracle. Now you have your miracle. Like, miracles are just falling just all like, around. Yeah. Coming in the direction. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of prayer things here, too. When do you want to do that? Well, well, okay. But let's Stacey yeah. speak okay. first. All I, right. would like to, I would like Stacey to... Okay to be able, I, I want you to be able to have your voice to just whatever God leads you to say, yeah. to say it. Mm -hmm. And yes. Okay. 
Okay. Well, I wanted to go back to, I wanted to go to Isaiah 61 and okay. verse three. Okay. Um, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, yeah. to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the yeah. garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. Yes. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Yeah. So when, when we do start to pray, that, that's where I'm going to come from with the, um, you know, the arrows. But yeah. I wanted to talk about some of the manifestations of the spirit of heaviness that's on that, you know, Good. the strong man is the spirit of heaviness. But on that tree, we have gloominess and trouble. Mm -hmm. um, Good. We have, I'm going to release some scriptures on um, self-pity, which is Ooh. Psalm 69 and verse 20. Mm. And um, Pastor Leslie, earlier, both of you, um, Apostle Ray, you mentioned destruction, but then you mm. mentioned self-destruction. Self yeah. And this coming Friday, um, my topic on the radio is self-destruction, where we're okay. going to, that's the whole um, discussion. Okay. But the, the spirit of heaviness, yeah. it sets people up to self-destruct because uh, every everything wow. is negative, everything is pessimistic. And mm. when you have that bruised and that wounded heart, that bruised and wounded spirit, like you, you don't see nothing else but right. the pain of what happened. So mm. that rejection yeah. that we talked about is on that tree. Mm. So... You have mourning, which is the normal mourning that a person goes through when they suffer a loss. Yes. And that's Isaiah 61 to verse three. But yes. in, in Genesis 37, Jacob refused to be comforted when they, mm -hmm. you know, he thought Joseph was dead, but he really wasn't. So right. that lie, that lie killed his spirit. Wow. Yeah. But, but he grieved excessively. Wow. And he, he refused to be comforted. And that's, that's another good. arrow we need to put out tonight because people are refusing to be comforted because wow. they don't want to come out of their comfort zone. They don't want to trust God. Wow. I did that. Yeah. I've been hurt. I've been wounded. Don't you see that I'm bruised? Wow. So through sick. our love, we're going wow. to just tear down all of the diabolical cords all of the soul ties that has had these people just yep. wrapped up in bondage. Wow, that's and good. The yep. um the spirit of discouragement, despondency, and despair. Mm. And following that is depression. Mm -hmm. I'm in um Lan I'm in Lancaster Bible College and I'm a part of the student council. And we mm -hmm. pray every Wednesday at, at um, 5 p.m. Wow. And the spirit of suicide, it, it's been coming up almost every single session. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of suicide, it works closely with the spirit of heaviness and the spirit oh. of rejection. Yeah. And the goal is to just isolate the victims. If we can yeah. isolate them, cause them to feel abandoned, cause yeah. them to feel hopeless, yeah. then it's like, I have no reason to live. And then they start listening to the lie. Right. So when we release the truth, then the lies have to go away. Mm. So the spirit of grief and then oh. sorrow, sorrow or sadness. And that is <laughs> Romans nine and two, mm. Nehemiah two and two, Nehemiah eight and 10, and Proverbs 15 and verse 10. Wow. And the last three, hopeless, hopelessness, mm -hmm. loneliness, <coughs> and then the spirit of gluttony. Oh, wow. Interesting. There, there you go. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Most people that struggle with the spirit of heaviness, you know, once that depression gets huh. in there, that emotional eating. Yeah. You, you know you don't need that cake, but that cake is speaking to you. You go eat that cake, then you eat that whole cake. And, uh -huh. you know, 
Right. But so now people are borderline addictions, but don't know they are being controlled by a spirit of gluttony, right. which yeah. is more than just overeating food and stuff. It's just yeah. overindulgent. So that's what yeah. he really wanted me to release tonight with that scripture, um, yeah. you know, in Isaiah. And that's so whenever I'm praying with someone, and I, I go to that, I use that scripture a lot in my teachings mm. and I explain the spirit of heaviness to them. But then I say, we're going to put off, take off that spirit of heaviness and we're going to put on the oil of joy and the spirit of gladness, you know, right. because yes. it's an exchange that's taking place. Yes. And I say, I say, you may not feel it right away or you may feel it. Some of you, you may cry, you know, you may feel it in your heart, yes. but by faith, just know that God is setting you free. Wow, so, that is very good. I like that. That is awesome revelation. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. in regard, I love that, you know, where I where I picked up uh, revelation today, that spirit of hopelessness, the spirit of gluttony, and, you know, that spirit of heaviness, you know, um, you know, the oil of joy for mourning, that oil of joy, that balm of Gilead, uh, the mm. anointing oil, the God, Christ is the anointed one. And yeah. uh, Isaiah 10, 27, it says, it's, in the King James, it says the fat, but it's, it's the anointing that utterly destroys the yoke they, of oppression. It doesn't break it up so it can be built up again and, and repair the yoke over you. It yeah. says it, it is kaboom. It is, mm -hmm. it's, it's disintegrated, you know, so the anointing destroys, blows up the yoke of oppression, no longer to be put upon you. It's only the righteousness of God and, and, and the glory of God. We are the glory carriers, not, yeah. uh, not a vessel of, uh, of water that is what do you call that kind of water that's been in, in a pond too long? It doesn't, it's stagnant, we're stagnant and stinky. Yeah. I know I've been stagnant and stinky at, at certain times, but I love to be refreshed and that and that and that and that living water coming out of us. So if you got some of that stagnant and stinky stuff in you, well, we're gonna we're we're gonna do what uh, um, <laughs> the royal flush. Well, we're gonna do the royal flush. But I I, I love the mm -hmm. thing you're talking about is that we're gonna close the door to that thing, so that no longer leaking in you. We're gonna get rid of it. It's gonna blow up and be gone. But that is yeah. so awesome. And when we get into verse four of, of that in the rebuilding, because um, the father is all about, you know, uh, you know, uh, and it says, we shall rebuild the old ruins and shall raise up the former desolations. Yes. If we in a place where our frame physically, naturally, spiritually is broken down, well, God wants to give us wants to be we want to be a new creation in Christ. You know, whatever yeah. it was, we, we just let it go and God's going to make it. We're going to be that new creation, that new light, no longer in the darkness, but we're going to make that transformation. We're going to make that cross over into the things that God wants us to be in his character and his nature, not that of, of man. And um, yeah. so it says that, and I, and I love it when it says, and they shall be repair. This is what you're talking about, that place where people can yeah. come and be repaired. Yeah. yeah, in the ruined cities, and that's why the ecclesia. That's why in every city of every gate, every gate, every portal, every in in, in where you are in uh, Phila, uh, Philadelphia and, and every place that you minister, we need to raise up those people who are strong in the ecclesia to be at the gate like Nehemiah. Yeah. You know, he, he, when the evil even came close to the wall, he grabbed he he went and grabbed them by the hair and drove, drove them back an extra mile. He get. Get your evil and this away from my wall. Mm -hmm. And what do you mean your kids don't know the word of God? <laughs> he grabbed them by the ears and the beard and shook them too. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you got to do the right things right. You can't do the things the old way. I, I am the repairer of this. Wall. God gave me this yeah. of Nehemiah. And we put the gate on, the gate of salvation. Yes. It says in Isaiah 60, in, in Isaiah 60, in verse 18, it says, violence shall no longer be heard in your land, Isaiah 60, mm -hmm. verse yes. 18. And neither, neither wasting any more destruction within your borders. 
Amen. Like, you shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Like Nehemiah had it. We need to be yes. like that. Jesus Christ is the salvation of our walls and the gates. We need to know what's going in and out of our gates and, and no evil coming in. Both naturally, physically, spiritually. And that's that's what I like about what you were talking about doing things right and, and having uh, raising up sons and daughters of the most high. Uh and 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 apostolically I, I didn't know that you're doing every Wednesday at five and speak to all these Bible college students praying. and praying with them and awesome. They, they need, we, we need to be available for people to do that. So, yeah. so the ruined cities, so they, they will be the repairer of the, so heal people will go out and heal people. All that generation mm -hmm. will go out and heal people because it, it says the desolation of many generations. So we need, yeah. to, we need to turn around the desolation of generations and turn it the other way. And uh, mm -hmm. that's awesome, Stacy. That is just awesome. You're a kick butt kind of gal. That's why I like you. You got your army yeah. boots on all the time, ready to go to work. You know, you're part of uh, you know, Gideon's 300. You got your boots on, your armor's on, and you're always looking in the right direction while the enemy's coming, drinking or whatever, uh, drinking your water and and uh, the enemy's not going to get something. I'm just you're a, you're a woman of, woman of wow, working yes. warrior. Prophesy, prophesy. Like, yes, you're right. Yeah. And you know, I, I want to praise God right here um, and, and just celebrate him for both of you and mm -hmm. how you have prayed for me. And, mm -hmm. and just when I met you, I was kind of in that dark place. Mm -hmm. But hallelujah, I'm at the place of the oil of joy, the spiritual <laughs> gladness. <laughs> and I just. You know, the other side of going through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow yeah. of death, but you got to come out. So every valley has an entrance and it has an exit. So That's thank you for point. being with me on that journey. It, 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 you know, it really means a lot to me. Wow. It's been a blessing, Stacey, you know. Uh, and, and, and to hearing that the victories, the testimonies as you go forward, go forward, go forward. And all of a sudden the enemy comes in and gives you a blind side, knocks you back two or three steps and you shake your head and, and we pray and we cry a bit together. You know, that's what I like about Isaiah 56, uh, pardon me, Psalm 56, eight. Uh, I had that one up and uh, this one is a part of um, uh, Psalm 56, eight. I just had it here. Sorry. Um, you want me to turn to it? Yeah. Is it, uh, Psalm. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 56, eight. Where are you? And Pastor Leslie, what he was saying was also a part of the poem, um, the, the prayer you was reading earlier, which mm -hmm. I had forgot to comment on that because, you know, when things are going well and then, you you know, you have that little back, back step or the enemy come at you again. Yeah. And it'll, it'll really make you doubt that you received your healing or your breakthrough. You said Psalm 56 and verse eight. Yeah, because when you were crying and I was crying with you. This is what happens to all those people that are in that place, crying out to God. And this is how much God has a one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to read that. Yes. Thou, Psalm 56 and verse 8. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle, or are they not in thy book? It's the book of when tears. I, the, yeah. For every tear that you have shed, Stacy. You know, there's going to be five books that are opened up at the time that we go face to face with our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Book of Tears is one of them. And mm -hmm. the Book of Tears is every place that you have cried out to God in regards to whatever the situation is. And you and and the Lord has cried with you. And oh, those tears that he has cried with you, he collects them and puts them in his tear bottle at his throne and saves them. <laughs> And yeah, he writes them down in a book every time you cry. Man, yeah. my, our, our books will be so big, right? <laughs> such big books Look, my book is this big. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, how, much, how much he cares about us. I want you to know my natural mom and dad, you know, I, they, the only time I got a book was between on, on the top of my head or in the back of my butt. You know, <laughs> I just want to, God's book of tears is, is so... Romantic. It's so personal. 
and yeah. be personal and intimate and how much he loves us and he cries with us and that includes those tears of intercession when we're crying yeah. with others because he comes in and cries with you for others in that intercession and we're, right now we're in the in the month of Issachar, which is the, in the Hebraic calendar is the month of I, I, I know, but it's but the tribe is the month of Issachar, which is knowing the times of season, but also in that time of intercession. So what a time God is going to be pouring out to all the intercessors in the hearts of yeah. his daughters of Zion and sons and uh, coming into this place of intimacy right now for healing. Get the scar yeah. tissue off and get it. A brand new heart. Don't rend your garments. Rend your heart, as it says in Joel 2, I think, 18 mm -hmm. or something like that. But what do you mm -hmm. got? Oh, no, no. And, well, and just like when you're saying, like like in verse 9, you know, like, with, so like all the tears and all the buckets of tears that we cry. And then in verse 9, then shall my enemies turn back in the day that I cry out. Yeah. So when we're busy crying and we're crying out to God and we're just calling on him and we don't have the words, but we're crying at that very point, then shall my enemies turn back in the day that I cry. This I know for God is with me. Amen. Yeah. So he's already fighting for us as soon as we're crying, whatever we're bringing before him and, and our hearts, the intercession and we're crying, then he's already at work. And Amen. has been before him, but he's already at work because those enemies are turning back in that day. Then oh. they've got to turn tail and run. Yes. How do I know this? For God is for me. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And, and even this week, uh, Stacy, uh, you and I are crying together in our hearts in regards mm -hmm. to Psalm 141. And I'm going to bring it in here now because, you know, it just mm -hmm. seems like this is what the Holy Spirit's doing based on okay. persecution. And especially when you don't deserve it, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not even, you're not even the person where the persecution should be coming to, but somehow you end up with mm -hmm. it. So uh, I'm going to get Leslie to read it. She's a much better reader. Uh, okay. But Psalm 141, and it, the Lord hears our cry, and where the key thing is here, I, I read it out of a number of different uh, out of books, the New Living Trans, uh, Amplified, New King James, whatever. But verse 10 it says. Let the wicked fall into their own nets. Mm -hmm. In other words, God has a net for them to catch them. Let the wicked yes. fall into their own nets. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I escape easily. Wow. Easily. Wow. So we'll just leave that. But but listen to the cry here. Go ahead, Leslie. That's what the whole yeah the whole because song, because or? yeah the whole song. It's, it's not that long, no. but it, it talks about that cry in the hearts of the people out there. Who might be in that feudal position? Those people who are who yeah. are being persecuted for something that they didn't even do, or or in a health situation when people are so are battling cancer, or or they have loved ones, or there's so many different health situations, uh, or financial situations, or whatever it may be. <coughs> and let, let's just let's let's hear and kind of remember while we're crying, the tear bottle, and they're being recorded. Uh, in the book of tears mm -hmm. okay. yes and being caught mm -hmm. go ahead Leslie. okay so this is psalm 140 41 starting in verse one and yeah. again it's the amplified again and again uh, david is in the same cave in engedi when he's writing this and he's talking about how he's being persecuted and, and he's already had the opportunity to, he's already cut cut the garment off of saul and said i could have killed you but i'm not yeah. gonna do it because you're my you're my king Who, you, mm -hmm. I, I am not a threat <laughs> That's what he did. Okay. So it says, Lord, I call upon you. Hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth as incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Ooh, don't we need that? Set a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep watch at the door of my lips. Incline my heart not to submit or consent to any evil thing or to be occupied in deeds of wickedness with men who work iniquity. <coughs> Pardon me. Dry pickle. And let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous man smite and correct me. It is a kindness. Oil so choice, let not my head refuse or discourage. 
For even in their evils or calamities shall my prayer continue. Verse 6, And when their rulers are overthrown in stony places, their followers shall hear my words, that they are sweet, pleasant, and mild, <coughs> and just. Yeah. The unburied bones of, uh, of slaughtered rulers shall lie scattered at the mouth of Sheol, and as lumps of soil behind the plowman when he breaks open the ground. But wow. my eyes are toward you, O God, the Lord. Eyes are towards you, O God, the Lord. In you do I trust and take mm -hmm. refuge. Pour not out my life, nor leave it destitute and bare. Keep me from the trap which they have laid for me and the snares of evildoers. Like, boy, oh boy, that would be a prayer for every day. Um, let the wicked fall together in their own nets while I pass over them and escape. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, so let the wicked fall together in their own nets, and I'll yeah. pass right over them and escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I know in, in the King James here in verse 7, it says, Our bones are scattered. Wow, our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave. And mm -hmm. uh, Leslie said, She uh, she hold, which is hell. Uh, right. Jonah got pretty much there and, and beyond it, but. The father went and got him, brought him back. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, again, he was, you know, a, a minor prophet that was supposed to do what God wanted him to do, but he, he didn't want to do it God's way. I wonder how many people out there say, I don't want to do it God's way. I want to do it my way in my ministry. And God says, no, I want you to go to Nineveh and, and, and bring love to those, not the fire stone and brimstone and whatever you want to call the religious spirit you've got to deliver yeah. to the people that I'm belovedly in love with. They don't know it yet, but I am. But I'm mm -hmm. going to have to send you as a real scary kind of thing coming out of the wrong end of a whatever it might be, out of a, out yeah. of a fish. And and uh, But you're going to go, because I'm, I'm slow to anger, I am full in love, and tell them how much I love them, and tell the king. Yeah. And, and a nation yeah. at that time of 100,000 people, and it, taught, and it says it took three days to walk from one side of it to the other. That's a big place back then. How many big places today that you, it takes three days to walk across and God says, you know, just let my love be there in all these difficult places and don't speak what is in your heart that might hurt them. Speak my heart that brings love, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unmeasured acceptance so that they would come to know me as the father. And yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so there uh, I'll, I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> okay um that was good um the one thing that keeps coming back to me is the love mm -hmm. and then you know you with david in this cage every, in, in the cave every time david went through something through the psalms he demonstrated to us how he poured his heart out to god right and and every time god answered him but, you know, especially, you know, Psalm 61, it says, from the ends of the earth, oh God, I cry out to thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Like, how many times are we overwhelmed? And and, and to be honest, I was in situations where I, I couldn't even cry and I was right. just groan, you know, but the Holy Spirit still, you know, interpreted those groans and I got it right. out. <laughs> and it was some, you know, powerful, powerful, but there is power in our tears and our cries and God yes. cares. He wants to know. Yes. And yes. when you started talking earlier, what stood out to me is dislodging the myth tonight because most men are taught that men shouldn't cry, but yes. they need to cry because yes. men are hurting today. Men yes. are broken today. Men are depressed. Yes. You have Yep. Um, marriages that have fallen apart and men that yeah. pray for their wives, pray for their marriages to stay, but mm. she left, left anyway. We have yeah. the vets out on the street that fought in the war. You know, there's so many ways to pray for men and mm -hmm. men. God is concerned about men tonight. And if yeah. you are a man and you are listening, it's okay to mm. cry. It shows yeah. your strength, not your weakness. But right. God wants the men to cry. You know, David yeah. was a wonderful example. And you know, here in the East Coast, a lot of the churches are still closed because of the pandemic, but some of them are really? starting to open back up. 
And you know wow. what? We're seeing the increase of male worship leaders. Amen. Oh, and I said, God. God. <clears throat> yes. You know, David was such a worshiper, but the men are getting back in place. And and I've been praying for men since 2011. And it's like, I believe with all my heart that God is raising men up for such a time as this. And they're going to take good. their rightful place in the body of Christ. And the prodigal sons, they coming home. They're going to be restored. And love covers a multitude of sins. And love is the yes. antidote. And that's that's all I got to say. <laughs> that's awesome. No, and that's uh, so true. So true. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that is so you true. You know, uh, <clears throat> I, I, we're going to pray here for so many different okay. things out of our heart. And we, and, and we love to pray in our heavenly language and whatever freedom and and prophetically. And because uh, I also wanted to go into Acts 1 verses 4 to 8 in, regard, uh, you know, in, re mm -hmm. <clears throat> in regards to the preparation of Pentecost that we're, we're in that we're, we're going into that time of Pentecost. And, and many people today, they may know the Lord Jesus Christ as the personal savior and, 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 and they, re they, they're good with that, but they're not going in entering more into the promise of the same spirit yeah. that raised Christ from the dead is in Romans 8, 11 is in you. And that same power is the power when Jesus, you know, uh, wants, wanted the church or, or the, the ecclesia or the leaders to be empowered from all what would be in heaven in them to go forward. And as they did for 335 years uh, to advance the kingdom of God before Constantine came in and said, I will stop persecuting you the church the way if you will turn to my church and, mm -hmm. and because of persecution uh the the way or the church uh at that time expanded through all the known world and when the government came in with all the power and said i will stop persecuting you if you change your religion or you change your position or you make a mm -hmm. shift over to here and and we make we need to make the shift back to what it was in the first 335 years in the ecclesia and walking yeah. in in what Jesus walked in in the 40 days uh prior prior to his ascension and when he spoke uh in you know in the great commission that was mm -hmm. that was when he was the 40 days walking there's so much there where he was bringing empowered revelation to those people mm -hmm. that knew that he had been risen from the dead and they knew and, and saw the, the holes and they saw his glorified body and he ate with them and he sat with them. And he's saying, this is the way it needs to be to advance the kingdom of God. And you know how I taught you how to pray in Matthew? Now walk in it and live in resurrection life, everlasting life, apathonesco, because you will never die. As it says in, in John eleven twenty-five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, you shall not die. Do you believe this, Mary? Do you believe this, Martha? Do you believe it out there? Those who are in a place of fetal position know the Lord. You shall not die. So come mm, into that yes, resurrection. Yes, of life. Yes. Come into that power that God has given you at this time and break through in praise. Because when Jonah was in the whale and he was getting so close to come out the poop hole or the back hole or the she hole, <laughs> uh, I, 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 I just want you to know he was pretty white. I mean, he was broken down. And based on what's inside a fish but but he it says there that he worshiped and he cried out to god and the word that he used there in uh in jonah chapter 2 like uh, the scripture i think it's uh, i don't want to say but he, he says he he came to that place where he, he came out of his pity party that you were talking about he came out yeah. of his pity party even though mm -hmm. he was in the bowels of the fish for three days he was in the bowels of the fish and ready to come out as as fish fertilizer and in that last moment where he was in <laughs> sheeple which is hell he was on the other side and god went in there and got him because he he went into a place and he says in the hebrew he says toda he gave thanks before the manifestation of the event and he started to praise God, even though maybe his hands were half eaten off or whatever it may be. He, he still <coughs> broke through, raised his hands and started worshiping. That's why they nailed Jesus's arms to the cross. So he could not raise his hands to worship. 
and God does not want your hands nailed to the cross. Yes. He wants you to worship God through all situations. He does yeah. not want your feet to be nailed to the cross. He wants you to, your feet to be prepared for the gospel of peace and to walk in all things that he's prepared you to walk in and follow Jesus. Mm, yeah. <laughs> we are <laughs> in our place in resurrection life now. And many have got the understanding of that, but those who are in, in, in difficulties need to have the breakthrough. Yeah. They need that breakthrough. And David's going to come on in a minute, <clears throat> but I'm going to, uh, and then we're going to pray. But I, I, I need to give this revelation because it bothered me for about 10 years and I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I, when, when I went to Israel and one of my mentors, uh, you know, uh, um, um, Winters, uh, Roni Winters, he, 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 was our, he, was, he was the head of archaeology and history in the University of Tel Aviv. He was one of the last six tank, tanks that were left uh, in the Six Day War and saw the mighty hand of God. He was a German with kind of blondish red hair, a Jewish guy uh, who, who was part of the nest in, in, that, in, that, in that time. So they saw the mighty hand of God come in and take out the enemy. The, 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 those Jewish people know the power of God. They've seen the power of God come in. They're not worried about uh, what man is going to do. They, they know what God is going to do. We need mm -hmm. to be grafted into that kind of... We need to be grafted in. It says we're grafted in. But we need to have the fruit of that faith that they have. Yes. Of knowing God the Father the way they know God the Father. And one of the things that Roni taught me, and he's the one that found the Dead Sea Scrolls. He's the one that taught me a lot of this stuff. And it's wonderful. Back in 2004, 2005. And when he took me to the Zion, which is the seventh mountain in the seven mountains in Jerusalem, and it is the smallest of the seven. And that is where, uh, uh, that is where they had uh, the first communion Passover. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's where the house was prepared in. That is the place where the 120 received Pentecost, it came down. Uh, that is the mm -hmm. same place where Jesus walked through the doors uh, <laughs> after the resurrection. What doors wow. are we going to walk through in faith <laughs> to mm -hmm. meet those people in unbelief? In unbelief. He, he did it twice. Like uh, Thomas wasn't there the first time. He, he only heard about it. Right. He had to come back and had to put his fingers in. But many people have already met. But Thomas couldn't believe the words of even those who he had been with saying, you know, <laughs> Jesus was here. What, what yeah. do people need to, to believe? To believe, yes. To believe to believe and trust our God during these things. Thomas had to come back and put his fingers in there. And they, I hope you come to the place to understand the revelation and where that place is on the top of Mount Zion, which is, which is another book, the book of Zion. Every time we worship in spirit and in truth, and in truth. written yeah. in there, that's another book. And under, so you've got the mountain like this and, and the, and the, on top of the mountain, there's, there, there's, uh, where the Pentecost came down. That's where that's where the light came down, right? Down on top of the mountain, okay? And, and the mm -hmm. fire came there and 120 uh, people were filled. Underneath that mountain, coming in from this side, coming in from this side here, there's a tunnel. And guess, guess where David is buried? Exactly beneath where the fire came down in Acts 2. So I, could, I couldn't figure out why his bones were getting the fire of Pentecost. Mm, God wow. arranged that King David, a representative of king, priest, and prophet, the same as Jesus, the only one who mm -hmm. received the same power in Pente even though his, his bones received it and came alive wow. That's and powerful. prophesied to do that. <laughs> we we are in alignment of what God wants to do in Pesach, in Pentecost. Amen. And to get, mm. he was in the grave and the fire came down and the bones came. I, I just, we're blessed. Yes. God has never leave or forsake us and has a plan. And yes, our, his, his plan and his purpose for us is, is just that we would come and love him 
and be in a place to be set free from all kinds of guilt, shame, whatever it may be, especially the rejection that he had to take on for all of us in this kingdom yeah. of this world. And he did it with joy. Our yes, he did. did it with joy. And he destroyed the shame and guilt on the cross. I think that's uh, 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 Colossians 2. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, Hebrews chapter. Uh, there's another one there. But what a freedom we have. We're no longer, there's nothing holding us back. And Jesus has been resurrected. He walked in his glorified body for 40 days, which we're, this is the time now. Amen. 50 days after the resurrection, the, the promise came. And the promise came to his beloved sons and daughters for all eternity, everlasting mm -hmm. life. And we yeah. need to walk in that and not be caught in the things that you were talking about or were ministering on mm -hmm. in regards to rejection or in the cave. God wants to get us out of the cave, into the light. Yes. So there, there, uh, let's just, pr let's pray, for, let's do these prayer, re prayer requests here. And then David, any thoughts? And then we'll kind of sum it up here. Uh, okay. But, but I, I, go ahead. Uh, all right. So there's, the, um, just, well, hello. That wasn't a cave. That was just me. So the, there has been a, a, you know, and, and you guys all get and, and, you know, are aware of, but, you know, getting prayer requests and, and need for prayer, just like what comes to us. And so there's, you know, some of these ones that have come uh, just, you know, recently and some that have been ongoing prayer. But for, you know, there's a, a, a gal by the name of Brenda and she's in Oklahoma and and there's cancer of the liver and in the lungs. Um, he raised brother, you know, he's a continual. He'd had uh, cancer and, and has gone through treatment and so on. And now, you know, we're, we're believing God that he is on the healing side of that, that he is being raised up and being totally healed. Um, yeah. and, the, and then he and his wife both have, you know, just recently been diagnosed with COVID. Um, and there's another gal by the name of Kim in, or maybe it's a guy, I don't know. Kim, no, girl. Girl. In Maple, you know, in, in Maple Ridge in British Columbia, rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. Uh, and then there's another gal by the name of Lynn, <coughs> and um, uh, she's in. Sister to Ray. Yeah, so, but they're in Saskatchewan? Yeah, yeah. in Regina. Yeah. Um, for cancer again. Um, another fellow by the name of Jim and friends of ours from years and years back um, in Indian yeah. Head. His, his chronic condition has been uh, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, but he's now just recently hospitalized with double pneumonia, um, high blood pressure. And so there's a whole lot of issues. So, and then, so there's so many people and we've only got a few and then all the people that you're aware of and so on. So in, and once again, I, I'm borrowing um, for the healing. I'm. I, this is not my original, but it's comes from Brenda Kuhneman. Hank and Brenda sure. are in. Um, uh, I believe they're in. Are they in Oklahoma? I yeah. think. Yeah, I'm exactly. not. No, I can't say for sure. At any rate, at any okay. rate, um, divine health that rests upon each and every person. So Thank we're going to. We are going to make that declaration. Thank you, Jesus. Um, okay. And for anyone who is suffering from any kinds of illnesses, yeah. whether it's physical, emotional, um, mental, whatever it might be, there are so many ways the enemy has come after the body of Christ and, and God's sons and daughters and those who are not even there yet. Yeah. But <clears throat> we're going to make this declaration. And reconciliation of relationships and, and families and friends and, you know. Yeah, there, there's just. Restoration of marriages. Because our God is a God who can handle all of it. He already has. It's already been done on the cross ahead of time. But we're going to take and decree and declare that each and every one of each person will experience divine health. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Healing and wholeness. Brain, Jesus. And right now, because of the authority that we Jesus. have, because we are sitting in heavenly oh, places with Shut Christ, up. our God, we have the authority then to rule from the heavens. And we take that authority over the curse of sickness, disease, viruses, pain, and suffering in Jesus' name, whatever form that comes in. We command every adverse physical and chronic condition to leave your body and all spirits of infirmity, 
must depart from you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we speak upon you the divine healing promise that Jesus took your sickness and has carried your diseases. We say that all med that all meddling ailments, those darn things that are meddling with our lives, those meddling ailments, syndromes, disorders, irritations, aches, and discomforts must cease and desist. Thank you, Jesus. We speak, Blood to Jesus. We speak Blood your Lord. body now, and we command that your body will align itself and function the Thank way you, it was Jesus. created to be. We decree that you are alleviated Thank from Jesus. everything that would make you susceptible Thank to disease. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We Jesus. speak and we Thank say you, that your immune system Thank you, is miraculously Thank you, strengthened Thank you, and your health Thank springs Jesus. forth speedily. Oh, yes. And we declare that it will manifest now. In Jesus' mighty name. The scripture reference here is Matthew 8, verses 16 and 17. So when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick, and that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and his spirit was. Jesus. And we, we, we stand on the word of God for that, that God's word is true. It does not return void. We speak that forth and we just say, go, go, word of God. Jesus, you are the word. We send Jesus. We send you, Jesus, as the word, each and every individual, that each one will be raised up from their sickbed. Each one will will be alleviated of the suffering. Each one will be delivered of all those dark and demon spirits. Each one will be set free, even by the captivity in the mind. Each one will be will be raised up. God, you know exactly who's who and where they are. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we continue to send you the word to each person individually. Lord, that only you know how to reveal yourself to each one as they will see and understand. God, because you have created each man is so individual. I thank you, Lord, that in truth, 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 truth to dispel lies. Truth to dispel every lie in the name of Jesus. Truth. Truth, 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 your truth sets the captives free. Even livers, I just I just seen a big liver that has that right now in the name of Jesus, that that liver will it'll it'll come back to its proper size. It will not be enlarged in a and so it will do all the proper cleaning of the whole system. Years that have been blocked, I'm seeing a right ear. It's been blocked from hearing properly. It is the name of Jesus. <laughs> Even as Jesus uh, stuck his finger in the mud, but he stuck his finger. And yes. that, but Lord, we just we just take yes. because the, the finger of Jesus God, through Jesus us could be said. Yes, Lord to put in the ear of that person that that will be unblocked and the hearing will be reestablished in Jesus, Jesus name it will be restored even to full function in Jesus' name. Migraines, where there have been migraines that have overtaken and caused so much pain and suffering. Even to the point that I can't take this anymore. In the name of Jesus, I send the blood. I said the blood, yeah, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, and I destroy it in the Jesus' way and name, no that that will no longer, that will no longer, in the name of Jesus. Devil, you get your hands on me. Those ones in Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, we bless you, God. Yes, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord Lord. 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 For you are the mighty one of Israel. Lord. You are the Lord God Almighty, and there is nothing to do.
Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank, Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. For those that are sitting in that fetal position right now that are contemplating suicide, who are in that place of hopelessness and are giving up, I'm saying no, no to that lie. I'm saying the scriptures that were spoken today, Isaiah 42, 7 to 10, it says, cry out to your God and cry yeah. out that he hears yeah. those cries and he will deliver you. And just do the, do just, just say from your heart and praise from your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and just start praising him and singing to him that, that he mm -hmm. is, he is your refuge. He is your strength. Run into that strong tower. The righteous run into that strong tower, and it says that they will be saved. Yeah. He will lift yeah. you up, you, those yeah. righteous ones. He will lift you up into safety. Lift he will earth. lift you up into healing. Yes. He will lift Hallelujah. you up into his presence. He will kick yes. you out of darkness and bring you into light. But just, yes. just, uh, just make that strength of starting to praise him and giving mm -hmm. thanks to him, even in your greatest difficulty. Mm -hmm. And in First Peter chapter two twenty four, by your, by his stripes you are healed by the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. over your mind, over your physical body, yeah. over, yes. over every every thought being held captive to the knowledge of Christ, and that his blessings be upon you and bring you freedom for this. For the spirit of the Lord is there is. Freedom, and we just speak the spirit of the Lord. If you don't know the Lord yes. Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that the spirit of the Lord fall upon them. Send your, send your disciples, send your, send your angels, but send people that go into that place wherever they may be in captivity, in prison, whether it's an actual prison or in a house where they've been prison themselves in their mind, or their body, or whatever it may be, in addictions. Mm. Lord, set the captives free. Let them, them, let free them come out of their ruined city, their ruined bodies, and let them come into a place that is new and fresh and alive. That is mm. that crossover from the darkness and the death yeah. into the light yeah. and to the righteousness and to the resurrection life of who we are in Christ Jesus in this yeah. time, in this time and season time. that we're yeah. living in. Yeah. Your precious name, Jesus. Yes, father god in the mighty name of jesus we just want to celebrate you god for who you yeah. are yes, and we celebrate you for what you have done tonight oh god yes. and we celebrate you for your power for your presence for your protection yes. we mm -hmm. thank you for those god that will listen to this message those that are listening and those that will listen later yeah and we pray god that you would release a fresh anointing upon them yes. we pray that you would release fresh oil oh god we cover yes. them with the blood of your son jesus christ yes we saturate them with the blood of your son jesus christ and we set up perimeters that the enemy cannot yeah. cross the enemy right. will not cross, God. And we yeah. thank you for hiding them under the shadow of your wings where your yes. truth is their shield and their yeah. buckle. Yeah. And Father, we place a demand on your word tonight. Yeah. And we thank you in Luke, the 19th chapter, when Jesus right. told the two to go untie the colt because mm. he had Amen. need of them. So God, every category that we have prayed about, that we have talked about tonight, mm -hmm. we thank you for untying women. Mm -hmm. We wow. thank you for Amen. untying Amen. men. Yes. Yes. We thank you for untying families. Yes. We thank you for untying marriages. Yes. We thank you for untying relationships, oh God. Yes. Yes. We thank you for untying little boys and little girls. Yes. Yes. Untie them, oh God, yes. and loose them in the name mm. of Jesus. Oh God, we know that you have need of them and many of them may not even understand. But yes. oh God, we ask that you open up their understanding. We yes. pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would remove scales from blinded eyes. Yes. Open their eyes so that they may see. Release the spiritual illumination of your word. Let yes. something said tonight, oh God, be an eye opener. We yes. pray right now in the name of Jesus as Apostle Ray was talking about the gates, oh God. We thank you for a change of guards tonight. Yes. 
We thank you, oh God, that the enemy that has been standing at the gates, his assignment is canceled. And yes. based on your word in Psalm 21, oh God, in verse 11, the enemy will not be able to perform their wicked devices against Amen. your people. And they are turning and they are walking away from their assignment in the name of Jesus. You, we Jesus. stand on your word, oh God, in Isaiah 63. And mm -hmm. we bind the spirit of heaviness. We yeah. break it off of your people. We break the spirit of oppression in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we loot the garment of praise, the oil of joy, the spirit yeah. of gladness. We thank you, oh God, that your people are going to rejoice. We thank you for <laughs> lifting up hands hands and worshiping yeah. you and, and loosening and untying the feet so that they yeah. can praise you, oh God. Father, yeah. we ask that you would loose an explosion of praise. We yeah. thank you that they are going to praise you even when they don't understand. They are yeah. going to praise you in the good times and the bad times. But yeah. we pray that you would release a spirit of praise that will cause every woman, every man, every boy, every girl to break out in a radical praise. Yeah. And as they begin to praise you, as they begin to worship you, God, send ambushments against the enemy based on yeah. your word. Father, yeah. we ask even now in the name of Jesus that you will send earthquakes, God, and that you will shake the very foundations yeah. of every evil altar that has been erected against Amen. your people. In the Amen. name of Jesus, we yeah. remove every family, every generational, every bloodline curse. We break yes. it off of them, God, in the name of Jesus. And we mm -hmm. release the power of the blood of Jesus to yeah. Flush out, oh God, everything that's not like you in the mighty name of mm -hmm. Jesus. Everything that has been planted in their dreams, everything that they ate, oh God, yeah. let them vomit it out in the that's name great. of Jesus. Remove the poison, oh God. Remove yeah. everything that was planted by the spirit of divination. In yeah. the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you said in your word that no weapons formed against your people mm -hmm. shall prosper. Great. Now, Father, we celebrate you that the we just celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we decree mm -hmm. that the resurrected king is resurrecting his people. Yeah. And Father God, we thank you that it's not by might nor by power, but it is by your spirit, God. Mm -hmm. And we decree that the, the assignment of death is canceled. The yeah. assignment of the spirit of heaviness is canceled. The assignment of the spirit of, of error and that lion spirit that's been mm -hmm. working with the spirit of robbery. Oh, your no assignment is canceled in the name of Jesus. And we lose the spirit of truth, oh God. We yeah. lose the spirit of righteousness. And yeah. we thank you, oh God, for having your way tonight. Yeah. Bless God like only you can bless. Heal and deliver and set the captives free. We thank you in advance for the tears that you have collected. And we yeah. thank you for the bottles. But, oh God, we thank you for answer prayer. Yeah. We thank you, oh God, that you have sent us to bind up the brokenhearted. And yes. we thank you, Lord, for just being glorified, being exalted. In yes. Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving yes. in our heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Wow. There's some fire. There's uh, Luke chapter <laughs> 3, verse uh, 16. You will be not only baptized in the Holy Holy Spirit you will be in water, but in fire. Oh, I like that stuff. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Well, David, what do you got there? You know, I, I was very blessed. I, I, and the prayer, um, wow, we, we, you know, with, with our voices, uh, I believe that our king has given us the voices tonight to shake, you know, the, uh, the ungodly, you know, whatever they have, uh, devices that they have tried to come against our families, our loved ones, our yeah. relationships. You know, especially in the, our brothers and sisters in the states, and especially and here in Canada as well. You know, especially for men. Uh, you know, uh, I I agree, uh, Stacy. You know, with uh, with that, and sometimes 
I'll tell you a story just quickly. You know, I, I was driving to Quebec one time and I, I was in my, my, my lowest moment. I said, I was, I was talking with my wife. I said, when am I going to have my breakthrough? And, and, and all of a sudden the tears start coming down and I'm driving on the freeway and I'm like, Lord, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good man. I, I, I'm, I'm serving you and I, I, I'm just, uh, just crying out to him. And, and you know what? I just let the tears flow. And it wasn't shortly after that that received a breakthrough. But the breakthrough can come, you know, and don't, don't be afraid to cry. I agree. L l cry out to God. Cry out to him when you're, you know, when you're in your weakest times, you know. He's, he lo I I'm sure that he loved that. And, you know, I, I got yes. close to him. You know, it's just amazing. So yes. what a wonderful blessing. Uh, yeah. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Tears are good. Amen. Yes, they are. Yeah, uh, tears are good. Did, were you able to get that a song that Leslie sent to you? Did you test it? And, you to, maybe have another time. Uh, to, to play it? it by did, My Spirit. This is By My Spirit. Did, the And you maybe haven't had David, but that's okay. It was an email that I sent earlier in the day. But, but it, just that, because that, the word that Lord gave me for this year was, you know, not by might, not by power, yeah. but by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh, wow. And yeah. so today, and I, I was just saying, okay, God, Jesus, what do you need me to know today? What do I need to know for today? And he just spoke it again, not by might, not by power, but mm -hmm. by my spirit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we keep that forefront, then we can keep our hands off. Yeah. And yes. allow him allow him to have yeah. his way and we don't try to to take it over can, but can anyway. you pull up that song and because well, ralph has a word here he just yeah ralph's got something he'd like to say yeah so well, yeah you can't play it on the air copyright. oh copyright okay yeah ralph has a word just here's ralph reverend ralph <laughs> well whatever i'm ralph yeah ralph hi ralph hi ralph <laughs> hi <laughs> bless you awesome Awesome to sit in the background, in on the back pew out here. <clears throat> Just all through the the uh, the, uh, the prayers, I'm one of my favorite scriptures. Ray and Leslie have heard me use this so many times, but it is the response to all those prayers. It's God saying, "This is Psalm two." Uh, I'm going to read the first four verses. Why? God's asking a question. Why do the heathen rage and the um, people imagine a vain thing? Wow. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And the father's sitting in heaven and he says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall have them in derision. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord's response to all of our prayers is he's laughing. Yeah. This is. Amen. Why? You know, why do the heathen rage? You know, I, I have this picture in my mind that, He's sitting there on the throne kind of peeking over there and he's talking to Jesus and he's he's saying, what do they think they're doing? Do they, they, do they think I don't know what they're up to or that I don't have a plan to stop it? <laughs> and he's just looking at them. And uh, yeah, that's, that's my faith place. Uh, the Lord is just laughing at everything that the enemy's doing. He knows what's going on, yeah. And he ha he just thinks they're foolish. Mm. Anyway, he just laughs them to derision. Yeah. So the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious yes. to you. Yes. And lift up the Lord, lift up His countenance upon amen. you, and impart mm. you His shalom. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ralph, for the ironic blessing. Yes. Did you have something? Uh, do you have th anything more, David? Uh, okay, uh, Les has got, uh, she's going to read something about storms here. <laughs> oh, am I? Not? Yeah. Okay. Well, you've had that in front of you the whole time. And before yeah. she reads that, 
on on my Facebook, I put out the last Mailchimp in, in, in that we write on a, a bulletin basis. I actually figured it out, David. Yeah. How, how to he take Mailchimp? He pushed and, a and, button, David, and it worked. Where we have you know <laughs> two hundred people on Listen, on Mailchimp, uh, uh, two hundred people on our Mailchimp that get our uh, bulletins and so on. I just figured out how to take it's on my Facebook where between my Facebook, I have 3000 and then on the ministry, there's another uh, 1500, which are different, pretty close to 5000 people that just got this. So uh, we, we've got a double, double blessing like that promise, uh, you know, so as far as the last bulletin that went out, if, if you didn't get it, uh, it's there and you can read it. So Leslie has. And I think we had a storm here Saturday where they were saying a tornado was coming in and all we got was two beautiful rainbows, double, oh, double rainbow, double blessing right over our, right over Carberry, right over, right over the, uh, the new uh, Apostolic Resurrection Life Gathering Discipleship Training Center that is being birthed. And Dodd says, <laughs> just like the Psalm 2, I, they're going to do what? He's just laughing. I'm giving you a double blessing and my promises are true and they're happening. So don't listen to what the enemy's trying to say. And with this storm coming in, I have everything under control. Okay, let's read your storm okay, thing. Okay, so with, I think with this, we will close then, David, okay? We, okay? I think we'll take this into the close because it is, we are time to march in. I know. But there's, uh, it's just a, a parting thought, shall we say. When storms come your way, remember you know the master of the wind. When sickness finds you, Remember, you know the great physician. When your heart gets broken, just say, I know the potter. It mm. doesn't matter what we go through. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Before you push the button, thank you, Stacy Lunsford. From, yes. You know, uh, I haven't been to Philadelphia in P Pennsylvania, but... I, know, I just know that Ralph, he talks about uh, Philadelphia and the brother you love, and he talks <laughs> about uh, all the other agape love. So I'm going to come down there and get some agape. In, in, in yeah, come on I down. Want, I want that brotherly love, but I want to see that whole city, as you say, the Father's love come down and just give agape everybody there in Pennsylvania. Amen. Just have a love <laughs> hug bunch party. <laughs> yes, you're more than welcome. Yeah, so Arise and Shine Ministries down in Pennsylvania. Arise and Shine, that light. See, I'm just doing a segue here. And close that back door and, 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 and don't, you know, come into a place of safety. You know, and eloquently speaking, Stacy's got the voice of God coming through her. And it's eloquent. It is the word of God. John 1, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word, the word was in through God. God in a beautiful way. And that's what came through tonight. Amen. So bless Amen. you all. Until we see you Saturday, we have uh, we have Ark here on Saturday at one one thirty. In other words, Apostolic Resurrection Life Training. We'll do a live stream. <coughs> so on Saturday at one one o'clock, one thirty, come over to the house here, uh, Stacy. Have yeah, a cup come of on coffee. over, Stacy. Come on over, yeah, Stacy. I'll come on over. Bed, and uh, and we're, we'll eventually we'll hook up with you and. Uh, and uh, so I know you, you want. You, no, no. You, what do you want to do? Kiss Nothing. me. All right. You like kissing me? She wants. And to... On this note. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. Bye bye. You, bye, bye. Love y'all.